Hi, Spider Slayer here, getting ready to do another one of my comic book reviews. I do these reviews because economic times are rough, and if I can help you save a couple of bucks by uh, doing a review and you not buying a crappy ass comic, well, that's what I'm here for. So today's uh, review is all about the long awaited issue number three of Kick Ass 2. Can you believe it? I mean, seriously, this issue took forever to come out. It's been literally like, I think, six months. Finally, it's here. I think it's been so long, I don't remember what the first two issues were about. But anyway, the issue is written by Mark Millar, and the art is done by John Ramona Jr. And um, all I can say about Jr.'s art is... It's good for Kick-Ass. It gives Kick-Ass his own feel, I guess, where I'm not too crazy about his art when he does Spider-Man or the Avengers and stuff like that. Those, those characters were drawn a certain way. I just I don't like the way he usually does his art. But for Kick-Ass, for some reason, it fits the book nicely. So with that being said, let's go do a walkthrough through the comic, and then I'll rate it for you guys okay so here we go in issue number three um, in the last in the last issue br briefly uh, Dave was li living out his uh, dream being part of a superhero team that's basically what it is um, so now they caught themselves their first bad guy and basically the bad guy was doing illegal prostitution and the first page starts off with a nice one as the dog is sitting here grabbing the guy's balls. Isn't that what you always want to see? This dog grabbing people's balls? I'm sure it is. Must have hurt. So they're basically saying, you know what? Where's the cash that you've been stealing from these ladies? You promised them a job and you're doing illegal prostitution. And so he's like, it's upstairs on the table. My son's up there. They basically whack the kid up upside the head and to find the girls you know smoking some marijuana and things like that and uh, they basically just take the girls and they say you know what take the money that he stole from you and just go on and that's what happened and they leave the guy there with bloody balls and that's about it so next they get into the van and they drive away and Dave is just sitting here saying that, um, you know, it's not all about kicking ass and beating up all the bad guys. It's basically about um, doing uh, soup kitchens and doing missing persons and going out and just doing good deeds for people. That's what it is about being part of the superhero team, which was pretty cool, which I liked. Um, they showed that they got a couple new recruits in the group, and now you can see here that there is probably about 12 people in their little group in all. Um, next, uh, next important panel here is that we see Dave talking to Mindy, trying to convince her to become part of the little club that they're in, and she's like, I can't join your stupid club you know because I made a promise and I have to honor that promise uh, to you know my family and basically that's what happens um, next thing you know is as she's walking to the car she sees her dad you can see over here she sees uh, she sees dad and he's kinda of pissed off at Dave there you can see that right there so that ends that. Now Dave is walking home. He expects to, you know, see his dad is not at work, and he's like, "Dad, where are you, Dad?" And then, big page coming up right here. I mean, it's a big one. This is when the issue starts getting good. Big page, right here. Dad finds out that he is kick ass, right there. And him and his art, and him and his dad get in this big argument. And his dad's like, what are you kidding me? This is worse than doing drugs. This is what I, this is why your grades are so bad because you're going out at night and you're sleeping during the day. And he's like, this is ridiculous. 
And he goes, well, I'm just trying to be a superhero. And he's like, what? He's like, you've lost your mind. And he goes, and he basically tells his dad, well, at least I don't watch BS TV. And he goes, and I don't want to end up like you. And his dad's like, well, what is that supposed to mean? And he goes, and he goes, well, I don't want to talk about it. I'm out of here. So he storms out, storms out of the house. And his dad's like, shit. So that opens up a whole new can of worms. Next thing we know is the colonel, the leader of the Justice Forever, reveals their new table. It's like their meeting table at their little hideout. You can see here. Um, next, um, he's calling for his dog, Sophia, and his dog is now dead. And basically now we see some very odd looking bad guys. And this one's like a she-man, and she says, sorry, man, dog's dead. And the colonel's like, what the hell? So you can see right here. Right there, right here on this page there. And the next thing you know, he draws a gun. And then, pop, right in the stomach. Oh, man, that's got to hurt. And next we see that the true guy and the true leader behind this all is our friend the Red Mist and this is their henchmen and they basically trash the room and he whacks the, the colonel's face with the keyboard you can see that right here boom 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 and he says so we write your name on the wall and he's like no I'm not Red Mist anymore that was the old me I was the asshole who liked to dress up like a superhero and spend all of that his money on variant covers. So now he goes, and, and now 24 hours later, we see the person, the colonel, right there. The colonel, he's murdered, he's sitting on the chair. The police are coming, and it says, Red Mist is dead. And the dog's head is on top of the kernel. And it says, Long live the mother beep. And it says, Just get these guys out of here. And then the next thing we see on the panel is we see Mindy stands up and she gives the pissed off look. And that says it all right there, that I think she is coming back. So basically that's the end of this issue. Hopefully the next issue doesn't take another six months to come out. And we will see what happens. But I give this issue a three, no, I give it a four out of five. Good issue. I think the only reason why I didn't give it higher is because it just takes so long to come out. And you get turned off when you're like, man, really? This is finally coming out? Man, should I get it or shouldn't I? But for all you guys that can't really spend the extra money right now, I did a pretty complete walkthrough through it. So I hope you appreciate it. And if you do want to buy it, please go ahead and buy it. Buy the issue. It's good. It's a good story. I recommend though reading 1, 2, and 3 back to back to back. So you definitely know what's going on. So until the next review, this is Spider Slayer out. Have a good night.